Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem delete and earn. And before we get into it, I want to mention that this problem is actually very similar to another problem that we've solved on this channel called house robber. It might not seem like it, but when you do kind of interpret this problem, you can boil it down to being very similar to house robber. So if you haven't solved that problem before, we've actually solved it on our channel. So I recommend checking that out if you struggle with this problem. But now let's actually get into it. So we're given an input array of nums and we want to maximize the number of points that we can get uh, by performing the following uh, operations. Uh, we can pick any number uh, nums at index i and we can delete that value to earn all of the points. The points are worth the value itself. So if the value is 4 we get 4 points. But the catch is after we delete that value and earn the points, we have to delete every single element equal to uh, one less than that value. So basically nums minus one and every value equal to nums plus one. So basically if we earned and deleted a four, that means we also have to delete every five and every three in the input array, but we don't earn the points from deleting these two neighbor values to the original value. So that's kind of the catch here. And what I'm really gonna be focusing on with this problem is kind of simplifying it because the explanation kind of makes it more complicated than it needs to be. One is that the input array could actually have duplicates, right? So it could actually have, you know, multiple four values. But obviously, if we delete one of the four values, then we have to delete all the fives and all the threes. So if we're going to delete one of the fours, we might as well delete all of the fours and earn all of the points associated with them. So what we're going to do with our input array is actually eliminate all duplicates to make this a little bit more simple. So we're going to take the input array, eliminate all the duplicates. But before we eliminate the duplicates, we want to make sure that we count the number of occurrences of each value because we don't want to, you know, lose how many we actually had. If we had three occurrences of the four value, we want to still remember that because when we delete it, we want to remember that we earned 12 points, right? Three times four. And the second thing is uh, we're going to actually sort the input array because that's going to make it really easy for us to check. Okay, this four, uh, we chose this four, we earned the points. That means we have to, you know, not include the three, which is right to the left of the four. And we cannot also include the next value, which is five. So sorting is also going to help us in this case. And once you do these things that I mentioned, you sort it and you eliminate duplicates, this problem becomes really similar to House Robber. And let me show you why. And by the way, House Robber is a one dimensional dynamic programming problem. And now let's actually explain the solution. Okay, so let's say the actual input array was this, 2, 3, 3, 5, 7, 7, but we sort it and we eliminate all the duplicates. So we're actually left with this array, but we make sure to count how many we had. So we keep our count in, let's say, a hash map that looks something like this. So now we want to know what's the maximum amount we could possibly earn. And we're actually going to handle this with a brute force approach, but that brute force approach can actually be optimized to be a very easy dynamic programming solution, which is also very efficient. And the intuition behind that is this. First of all, if this was the house robber problem, we're just given some values like this. And we all we know is we can't uh, take adjacent values. So if we take this two, we can't choose the three. If we choose the three, we can't choose the two or the five, but we can choose the seven. You're probably seeing how uh, the house robber problem is similar to the problem that we're solving right now. The only difference is with the problem that we're solving right now, it's not about adjacent uh, values that are right next to each other. It's about the values themselves, right? So two and three are adjacent because two plus one is equal to three, right? Three minus one is equal to two. So that means we cannot include both of these, right? Because we remember if we do include the two, we have to delete the three and we have to delete any ones that exist in this case, there aren't any ones. We know that because this is the first value in the array. If there was a one, it would have came before it. 
But notice how the other values in the array, three, five, and seven, if we choose a five, we have to delete all fours and all sixes, but none of those even exist in the array. And for seven, uh, if we uh, earn the seven, we have to delete all sixes and all eights, but those don't exist either. So actually, we're perfectly allowed to include the five and the seven, and actually the three as well. We can include all three of these values, but if we do include all three of these, we can't include the two because two is right next to three in terms of the value itself. Okay, so this is starting to get a little bit more easy to understand. Now, before I actually just jump into the dynamic programming solution, I wanna give you at least a tiny bit of intuition. So if first, if we were solving this the brute force way with recursion, this is what we would do. We would create a decision tree. We'd start at the first value. Okay, uh, we can either choose to include the two or not include the two. If we don't include the two, then the max we have earned so far is gonna be zero. Next, we get to the three. So if we included the two, can we include a three? Nope, we definitely can't. So we're gonna actually skip to the next value, five. So are we allowed to include a five? Yes, we're allowed to include a five with the two, right? And that's gonna be one of our paths, five, uh, or don't include the five, right? We don't have to include it. And in that case, our uh, total uh, would be uh, two on this side if we don't include the five. If we did include the five, it would actually be two plus five, which is seven. Now on the right side over here, where we did not include the two, uh, then we could uh, choose to include the three or not include the three. So that's gonna be one of the decisions, three or, or not include the three, which is gonna be zero. Now with this decision tree, the time complexity is gonna be something like two to the power of n, uh, but we can uh, make it more efficient with a DP uh, technique called caching. The way we would cache this is based on the index that we're at, right? So for example, at this position, right? We were, our index was over here. We were at the three, right? The way we could cache it is by saying like, okay, up until, you know, starting from this index, what is the maximum that we could earn, uh, you know, from the remainder of the array? And then we could cache it and then we wouldn't have to do repeated work. Right, and that would actually make the overall solution be big O of N. Uh, but, and we're gonna take this kind of main idea and translate it to a real dynamic programming solution, which is actually a little bit more easy to code up. And let me show it to you now. With DP, it's one dimensional. So let's create a one dimensional DP array. And what each of these positions is gonna represent is, uh, you know, for index zero, what is the max amount that we could earn from the first value of the array? That's what's gonna go in this position. What's gonna go in the second position is what's the max amount we could earn from the first two values of the array? Similarly, What's gonna go here is what's the max we could earn from the first three values. And finally, what's gonna go here is what's the max we could earn from the entire array. So as you can tell, this is gonna be our return value. But to build this value, we're gonna need the previous values as well. So let's see how we can do this. So just starting at the first position, uh, what's the max we can earn from two? Well, two itself, right? If we did include this two. Okay, so what's the max we could earn from the first two values though? Well, we have a choice. We could include the three. We could earn the three, right? How many points would that give us? Well, we can see down here, we have two occurrences of the three value, right? So the amount that we could earn from that is gonna be two times three, which is six, right? So is six gonna be the max we could earn from the first two values? Well, maybe we could actually include the previous value as well, two. Maybe we can add this to the six value and then put an eight over here. Can we do that? Well, no, we can't. And how do I know that? Because if you look at this value three, and then you look at the previous value two, you see that two is exactly one less than three. That means we can't include both of them. We have to make a choice. We include this one or we include this one. So uh, how we can determine which one to actually include is gonna be the max max of two or six. Which one of those values is larger? Of course, it's six. So we're going to put a six in that position. But you know, if two was bigger, we would have put the two over here. So basically what I'm getting at is the value that goes here is the max we can earn from this portion of the array. It doesn't necessarily mean we have to include this three in uh, the calculation for this position. Okay, so next value over here, we have a five value. 
And how many occurrences of five do we have? We have one, so we can earn five points by deleting this value, right? So can I put a five over here? Well, let's take a look at behind us. This is a three, right? It's not a four. If it was a four, then we couldn't include this value either but it's a three, that means we're allowed to earn from both of these values. So what I'm saying is we can take this five and add to it the six value that came before us. So we can say five plus six. So the value we put here is gonna be 11. Now, if this was actually a four, of course we wouldn't be allowed to do that. So does that mean we just put a five here? No, because it's not just this value we can choose. We delete this five, but we can still include all values that come before the four value. So what I'm saying is uh, we put a five here plus uh, the two that came right before uh, this one, right? So we'd put five plus two, that would be a seven. But in this case, this actually was a three value. So we can put 11 here. And actually, I'm gonna change this seven to be a six just to make this problem a little bit more interesting. So let's change that to a six. And down here, let's also change this to a six. So now we're at this six value. We can delete this six value. How many points are we gonna earn from that? It's gonna be six times two. So it's gonna be 12 points that we earn from that. Okay, so we can put a 12 here plus are we allowed to also just you know earn from all of this as well we could if the five was not a, like the one value away from a six but since five and six are right next to each other we're not allowed to do that uh, so we cannot include this 11. But at this point, you might start to realize that we only need to look at the two previous values. So from here, if the, the first previous value is adjacent, that's okay because we know that the second one is definitely not going to be adjacent. So we can just take that six and then add it to this as well, right? So what we can say in this case is 12 plus six is gonna go here. That's gonna be 18 but it's not always gonna be the case. And that actually ends up being our result. If you're clever, you'd realize that this DP, we have an entire array here, but we don't need the entire array to compute any position. For example, to compute this position, we only need the two previous values. We don't need the whole array. So when I code this up, I'm not gonna have an array. I'm just gonna keep track of two values and I'm gonna call them earn one and earn two. So earn one and earn two. Earn two is gonna be the uh, previous value, earn one is gonna be the value that's even before that one. And remember, every time we compute a value, for example, this 18 that we just computed, it represents what's the max we could earn from the array up until this point. In this case, it's the entire array. So we have our return value. This 18 is the return value. Maybe I overcomplicated things for you right now, but I think it'll be more simple when we actually code this up right now. And by the way, you saw that the time complexity with this DP solution is big O of N, but remember we're actually sorting the input array. So the overall time complexity is gonna be N log N from the sorting. Now let's code it up. Okay, so remember what we wanted to do is eliminate duplicates from the input array nums. We can do that just by passing it into a set constructor, and then we can convert that set back into a list by passing it into a list constructor. And after that, we wanna make sure that it's actually sorted so we can pass it into the sorted function and that'll return the array in sorted order. And it feels like cheating when you do it with Python, but I don't think interviewers would actually care. I don't think they wanna see you implement, you know, eliminating duplicates and all that. They wanna see you actually implement the real problem. Uh, but before we do all of this, we wanna make sure that we actually count the occurrences of each value. We know that's gonna be important. In Python, we can just pass in the input array to a counter and that'll return a hash map with the counts. Uh, but of course, if we really needed to, uh, and the interviewer wanted us to, we could code this up pretty easily with a hash wrap. I'm just trying to save time and focus on the real problem that we're solving here. And we're gonna have two variables that I talked about, earn one and earn two. Initially, we're gonna just set these both to zero because we haven't even looked at the input array yet. And then we're gonna start iterating through the array. So for i in range length of the input array nums, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just take the value that we're looking at at index i and just figure out how much we can earn from that current value because we know that calculation is gonna come up later on. So let's say 
uh, nums of i multiplied by the count of it, which we stored in count. It could be one, it could be two, it could be a hundred, who knows? Let's just get that count and multiply it. And the first case I'm gonna worry about is the case, the difficult case, where we can't earn, uh, where we can't use both the current value and earn two, which is the previous value. And how do we know if that's the case? Well, we know if the previous value is one less than the current value. And uh, we, we can figure that out first by making sure that i is greater than zero. And if nums of i is equal to nums of i minus one, plus one. You might think that this should be a minus one, but let me just explain it to you because I always make the same mistake. Uh, the current value, let's say it's a four. Let's say that the current value is a four. Uh, if that's equal to the previous value, which let's say is a three plus one, then we know that we can't use both of them because the previous value is one away from the current value. And the else case is basically gonna be if this is not the case, which means we can use both uh, the current value and the previous because they're not adjacent values. Okay, so now for the actual computation, first I'm just gonna go ahead and put earn two in a temporary va uh, value because we know the way we're actually gonna be doing this is we're gonna be taking earn one and just setting it to earn two. Because remember what each of these earn one and earn two represent is for an array that looks like, let's say one, two, three. Uh, if earn one is over here, let's call it E1 and E2 is over here. E1 represents what's the max we could earn from this portion of the array. E2 represents what's the max we could earn from this portion of the array. As we iterate through the array, we're gonna take E1 and then shift it over here. And when we do shift it over here, what that basically means is we just assigned E2 to this uh, variable. Uh, and when we uh, get E2, E2 is the one that we actually have to compute, right? E1 was just assigned to the original value of earn2, but earn2 actually has to be computed because what that represents is by adding this new additional value, what's the max we could earn from the entire array, right? So that's what we're gonna have to compute with earn2 because earn2 always represents what's the max we could earn from that portion of the array. Uh, so how are we gonna compute it? Well, it's gonna be the maximum of two different values and those values are current earn, right? Let's say current uh, is at this index, right? And let's move these back to their original values. We're trying to compute what's the max we can earn from here. So let's say we uh, earn this three, but we're not allowed to earn this two. So if we earn this three, we're gonna add to that value what earn one was, right? Earn one is over here, which is at a value that's not adjacent to this one. So that's one possible computation. The other is if we just take earn two by itself, right? Because we're trying to compute what's the max we could earn from this entire array. We don't necessarily have to include the three. If we do include the three, then we're also gonna include the one. If we don't include the three, then we can just take what's the max we could earn from this array, not including the three. It could end up being the maximum. Maybe I'm over explaining this, I hope not, but that's the main idea. That's actually all we have to do here. And the else case is pretty similar. The only difference is that we are allowed to use both current earn and earn two if we want to, if it results in the maximum. So once again, let's set temp equal to earn two. Oh, I just noticed up above, we didn't even use the temp variable. We want to put temp, uh, assign it to earn one. We know at the end we're going to be assigning earn one equal to temp, but before we do that, we want to overwrite earn two. We want it to be the max that we could earn from this portion of the array. And that is going to be just, we don't even need a maximum actually. We're just going to take current earn, which is the current value, plus earn two, because we're allowed to use both of them. So why not? Why do we even need earn one? Because we know earn two is always going to be greater than earn one or equal, but that's the entire code. So what are we actually gonna return? Remember, earn two is always gonna be the maximum. So by the time we get through the entire array, it should represent what's the max we could possibly earn. So let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it works. And it really is about as efficient as you can get for this problem. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.